So we're here today to talk about the Establishment Clause and the Religion Clauses of the First Amendment. The Religion Clauses say, Congress shall make no law respecting establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So before we talk about the specific controversies that the Supreme Court is considering this term, maybe we could talk a little bit about what, why is that in the Constitution? Uh, that's an excellent question and often uh, not asked. Uh, the religion clauses are really part of an enlightenment project. Uh, remember the old divine right of kings. Uh, the enlightenment project was designed in part to eliminate the divine right of kings. So the divine right of kings was the idea that the king ruled by virtue of God's grace. Yes, and therefore you couldn't question uh, their legitimacy. And the Enlightenment project was to replace that with uh, reason, so to speak, uh, practical judgment, reason, with an eye on self-government. The religion clauses, therefore, were designed to do two things in that context. One, which we're very familiar with, is to remove religion to the extent possible from government. The other is to remove government to the extent possible uh, from religion. The second often doesn't get as much attention as the first. So how does the Establishment Clause become a matter that gets litigated uh, periodically? What are the areas in which it's at issue? Uh, there are three major areas, interestingly enough, virtually all of them from the middle of the 20th century on. School prayer, uh, which most people have heard of beginning in the, uh, in the 1950s and 60s. Uh, Legislative prayer, which we're going to talk about, is a, uh, a subset of that. The second area is aid to education, again, which uh, began in the mid-20th century. Uh, and the third area involves religious displays, when government displays religious matters, creches, menorahs, crosses, and the like to celebrate Christmas or uh, other holidays and the like. So how has the Supreme Court analyzed these various different circumstances? With great difficulty, to be very honest with you, because over the years the Supreme Court has struggled with the appropriate Establishment Clause tests. And we have currently uh, probably three tests. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the oldest of the three is the so-called Lemon Test. Uh, which used to have three parts and now has two. And it's called the Lemon Test after the name of the a case. In the case, Lemon versus Kurtzman. And in this, uh, under this uh, approach, what you do is ask three questions. The first question is, what's the purpose of what the government has done? If it's to advance religion uh, then, and doesn't have a secular purpose primarily, then it flunks Establishment Clause analysis, and that's the end of it. Uh, in cases involving aid to education, where the purpose, for example, is pretty clearly secular, that is to promote education, but the issue is whether aid to private religious schools is constitutional, the court has also looked at effects. If the effect of the aid or what the government has done is to promote religion, uh, then that flunks the effects test. There was a third part, which uh, is probably just worth mentioning. It's now. Uh, eliminate, and that is the entanglement part of the former Lemon Test. That has been folded by the Supreme Court into the effects test. So that's one. So that's just one. That's, that's just one. Ha yes, indeed. And that dates from the 1970s? Uh, that dates from the 1970s in, in Lemon. The second one uh, dates after that, and it involves a religious display. Uh, that is the, uh, uh, the famous Pawtucket case uh, involving a crash. Lynch v. Donnelly. In that opinion, I think for the first time in that case, Justice O'Connor said uh, this lemon test as such is not very satisfactory. I think underlying her view uh, was that it really was too restrictive of, of religion in the public square. So she came up with uh, what she called the endorsement test. Uh, if you look at what the government has done, and you can see how this works from a uh, uh, in connection with religious displays, uh, would a reasonable observer have considered this to be an endorsement uh, of a particular religion? If the answer is yes, and that viewer, reasonable observer, will consider himself or herself an, uh, uh, an outsider, then it would flunk her endorsement test. In a way, she uh, folded both purpose and effect into her endorsement 
test. And so in the endorsement test that she, as she articulated it in Lynch, was she writing a majority opinion? Uh, she was writing a concurring opinion because the Supreme Court over a uh, quite a dissent by Justice Brennan and three others in the case uh, ruled that this did not violate the Establishment Clause and she concurred uh, in that but said that she, we are all better off instead of playing around with lemon let's do the lemon test let's instead look at endorsement and she found that this was not an endorsement even though there there was a crash that gave rise to uh, the so-called reindeer rule that you government can get away with any religious displays so long as there are reindeer and maybe some <laughs> Santa Clauses around there. Because those are le have less religious content than yes, the crush itself. Yes, precisely right. So that's two. Uh, now the third test is of uh, more recent vintage. That's Justice Kennedy's test in Lee versus Weissman that involved uh, a school prayer uh, at a middle school graduation. And Justice Kennedy came up with what has been termed the coercion test. Uh, the government was involved in selecting the clergyman for the, t for the benediction at the middle school graduation. The government said to the clergyman, uh, you can't be too overtly religious. You can mention God. You can, uh, you can make this part of the Judeo-Christian tradition in a very general sense. Uh, so that was one factor. Uh, but the other factor, the coercion factor, was that these kids from middle school graduation uh, uh, were, according to Justice Kennedy and four others, coerced. They were effectively required to be there, even though, technically speaking, the, grad, the middle school graduation was voluntary. Justice Kennedy said, let's be realistic about this. This is their graduation. These kids and their families are going to be there. So there was a fat captive audience. There was, prayer. in a sense, a captive audience. Uh, I would say, and we'll probably get into this a little later, that's probably the most, uh, the least restrictive of the uh, religion of the Establishment Clause approaches. Well, thank you, Shell. You're very welcome.